Hello everyone and welcome back to the CMB Extra YouTube channel for us you once again to talk about Battlefield Guinea Bottom Rehydrated now for the second time. Uh, I'm back to talk about this because it's now no longer 1 in the morning. <laughs> I recorded the last video where I actually reacted to all that uh, quite late last night. Um, I was a bit tired and so I didn't really want to talk for overly long. But I'm back now, it's now only 8pm so full of energy, full of energy to talk about some of the details and basically everything we know so far about this game, at least stuff I can find. The first thing I wanted to talk about was actually how successful this trailer has been so far. So it has around 500,000 views, halfway to being at a million. Uh, the most successful video on THQ Nordic is a little bit over 1 million views. So this video is already in, in one day, literally it's less than 12, uh, 24 hours. It is in the top probably 30 to 20% on their most popular viewed stuff. I don't know about likes and all that, but it's a big trailer for them. Which, once again, because I was always skeptical about how popular SpongeBob really was and for this game to actually happen. But it's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people watching this trailer, so hopefully that can get conveyed into people purchasing it. Uh, Nickelodeon will see that we like good games as long as this is a good game, which I'm hoping it is. So on Steam, we actually have some images! Which, honestly, though, they look pretty damn good. Like, look at that. Look at that. That is the best looking SpongeBob game we have ever had. If that's what the game looks like. I love the art style, I love the look, all that type of stuff. Uh, if you look on this one, there's one of the floating little objects. So hopefully, you know, there's a golden spatula up there as long as they haven't changed too much. <laughs> all that type of stuff. And, you know, it looks really good from these type of images. And we've got here, we've got a first look at the art style they're kind of going with. And for the robots, as long as it's is a, a similar representation to what the game is going to be. I presume, on, on, at least like uh, on a color range, this is going to be what it's going to look like. Hopefully it does look similar to this, which will be very interesting. Um, then you have Sandy, so you basically get the main three characters, and then King Jellyfish. A really interesting art style though, this one, because it's all yellow, so that will be quite interesting. But that's less important. So, so, we go down, down, down to about this game. Down the bottom. So about this game. Are you ready kids? The cult classic is back. Faith 3 remade. Remade. In Spongetastic Splendor. Play as Spongebob, Patrick and Sandy. And show the evil plankton. That crime pays even less than Mr. Krabs. I want to say Bikini Bottom from lots of ramp, uh, rampant robots. With your mighty bubbles. Of course you do. Want to join forces in a brand new multiplayer mode? The battle is on. So. Lots of stuff in there. Firstly. I'm really pleased that they seem to really get the comedy of the game. That was something Activision never had, or a lot of the people who have made SpongeBob games in the past, they just never got the comedy right. And I feel like they're 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 doing pretty well here. So game features play SpongeBob, Patrick and Sandy, and use their unique set of skills. So same as the original game. Thought Plankton's evil plan to rule Bikini Bottom with his army of wacky robots. Is that really a game feature? That seems more like the storyline. Um, meet countless characters from the beloved series. So honestly we might actually because there was quite a few characters in uh, the original game that we interacted with, but honestly, not countless. So they may have actually integrated more characters, maybe even more newer characters, like um, I think it was Spot, was Plankton's dog? They might have integrated Spot. Who would know? Um, remake features. Faithful remake of one of the best SpongeBob games ever created. I, I'm glad they said one of, because the movie game is pretty damn good. I still stick by that. Um, high-end visuals, modern resolution, and carefully polished gameplay. I'm just saying, you know, these are pretty high-end <laughs> visuals, if that's what we're seeing. Like, that's practically on par with the, the um, second movie. Brand new horde mode, multiplayer for up to two players, online split screen. So, from the sound of things, it looks like what was in the movie game, but now is online. So, you know, those parts where we go into the horde mode, three round things. So, it could be something similar to that, or it could be completely different, which would be interesting. Restored content that was cut from the original game, like the Robo Squidward boss fight, and more. So firstly, the Robo Scripted boss fight, if you haven't heard about that, Did You Know Gaming did a whole video about all this type of stuff. There was some concept art in the movie theatre, I believe, as well, of a boss that got cut quite early on because apparently there was no files or anything in the game, so it was cut, like, very early on in development. So it's amazing this guy's in here. It shows how much they are remaking this and making it a whole new product, which is really exciting. But also, and more, so there's going to be more stuff they're adding. Possibly they could be adding another item that got removed was the uh, the Sunday that SpongeBob made I think in season one or two, which uh, was like this toxic thing. But apparently that was meant to be in the game. There was even a model, and that was how 
SpongeBob and Patrick will get that, and that's how they can destroy the stone tiggies. So they might integrate stuff like that, which would be really interesting. But I'm also interested to see if they add in newer and more stuff. Then I decided to check out some other little places. I went to the PlayStation Store. Nothing so far, which is kind of surprising to me, considering I guess it is just the early announcements. They don't have any box designs or anything like that to show us. So this is all we have at the moment. Um, then, because I'm Australian, we have EB Games. And there's nothing. There's nothing here. I wasn't expecting anything, but there's been a few times where EB Games has released stuff prematurely. And I tell a lot of people have found out facts, so I was just checking to make sure, but yeah, there's nothing here. Hey, game one more by Plankton's Robotic Revenge. It's a good game. Good. Three stars. Nah, I get two. Um, <laughs> that reminds me, I was going to make a video at one stage. On, I went onto eBay and there's all these reviews for pla uh, Hero Pants and they're all like five star reviews and they're like the reason people gave was so funny and I was going to make a video about it. I will do that if people would like to see that. I will do a video on that. It was so funny. Now another thing I wanted to talk about was E3. I also uh, I switched my Twitter to dark mode because someone in the comments told me I should do that. So I did that <laughs> and it does look better. So teach you Nordic who lives in a pineapple under the sea but isn't coming to E3. Now that's, that's the thing I want to talk about here. Now... What exactly does that mean? Does that mean he's not going to be, there's going to be nothing shown at E3? Nothing. Nothing. He, but isn't coming to E3. He isn't coming to E3. That's the wording. Isn't coming to E3. Or is it just mean the trailer's out now? Um, the trailer, the announcement wasn't, isn't going to happen at E3. It's happening now. That'll be the thing we'll see. I'm hoping we'll get some type of trailer. I really do. Apparently, people have said it's coming out in 2020, which I'm not sure where they're finding that information out. I haven't been able to find it. So if it is coming out in 2020, we might not get a gameplay trailer this E3. We might, in fact, get next E3, which is a bit of a shame. I was really hoping the game would come out around November this year. That that seemed to me like a realistic kind of time span for a kid's game announcement and all that type of stuff. But it doesn't really look like they're advertising it as a kid's game. They're not treating it like it's a kid's game type of thing. They're treating it as... This is something that a lot of adults really want and they want it now <laughs> type of thing and they're kind of treating it in that way like their banner is this it's type of stuff like they understand the brand power of SpongeBob I suppose but they they aren't advertising it like oh it's, a, it's just a kids game type of thing they they're treating it quite surprisingly well next I want to talk about was Purple Light so the people who are making this game Purple Light they haven't done a ton that I can find I mean they look it looks pretty like schmick website looks quite quite nice so they got two what we're working on they've made a game called the guild three which i mean it's it's a game um and then they have two coming soon most likely this is spongebob and some other game hey possibly ah i hit my light <laughs> possibly <laughs> um you know maybe just a jimmy neutron attack of the twonkies a hd remake don't want to don't want to make any assumptions but or a SpongeBob creature from the Krusty Krab. I would love that, please. Thank you. Please. That is my favorite SpongeBob game. I don't care what anyone says about Battle for Kingy Bottom. Creature from the Krusty Krab is way better. It's not. Personally, though, I would play Creature from the Krusty Krab before Battle for Kingy Bottom, but Battle for Bikini Bottom is a better game. Um, so yeah, so they haven't done a ton. They've got um, the guild, which I haven't really looked into. It kind of looks, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I mean, okay, so it's like a mixed reviews. Yeah, all right. So they worked on the guild, um, Kiss Rock City, which looks like exactly what you'd expect. Uh, they made an Asterix and Friends game. Yep. And Panzer Tactics HD. So they're not the most well-known or large-scale group. But to be fair, though, I want to uh, mention this. Uh, the people who did the Spyro Reignited re uh, remaster thing, which is like one of the best-looking remasters I have ever seen. It looks incredible. It was made by Toys for Bob. All right, their history of games. The Horde. Pandemonium. I'm not sure if that's... I've, I've heard that. Uh, the Unholy War. Uh, other stuff. Disney Extreme Skate Adventure. Madagascar. Madagascar 2. Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam. A ton of Skylander games and Spyro. They're not the most prolific studio ever. ever. 
they haven't made a ton of amazing stuff. Just saying. I mean, I'm sure people there are some people who love Skylanders, but not me. This is a tiny bit worrying, Purple Lamp. Like, I don't know anything about them, really. But realistically, Toys for Bob, they're not the most massive. And they made Spyro Reignite Trilogy. That's pretty amazing for a company that made Skylanders and Madagascar. Just saying. So it's, it's a bit of a worry, but... Yeah. All right, so that's basically everything I want to talk about strictly related to SpongeBob and all that type of stuff. I now want to talk about some Chester stuff. Woo! <laughs> um, I'll go into the channel. Um, firstly, thank you everyone so much, all the people who watched the last video. I wasn't expecting anywhere near that amount of people. 4,000 views so far. That is, I think, like the third most viewed video on this channel. This is quite a small channel, <laughs> if you hadn't already told. Um, I was amazed. I was expecting like 10 views. I was expect. I was. I was honestly just doing it for me because I was so excited, and a lot of my excitement was built up from the fact that I've been covering it on this channel and like building up to it and talking about it and all this type of stuff and hoping for it. I want to document it. It's more for me. But damn, a lot of people watched it, which I was blown away by. And all the comments, so much fun, all that type of stuff. Um, so thank you so much for that. Also, there was someone on Reddit who was lovely. Um, I'm not gonna say their name because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that with Reddit um, saying people's username stuff like that I don't know but lovely person thank you uh, <laughs> I've had the most amazing time with you see um, I cover I do news on this here channel about Spongebob specifically Spongebob and so over the past like two years I've talked about events as they've developed I talked about how when THQ Nordic when, well, when Nordic changed their name to THQ, and I was like, oh, well, this could be an interesting step in the direction, in the right direction, you know? We've, these guys coming back, buying up these LPs, these um, IPs, they might get involved, all that type of stuff. So, you know, that's how news videos work, you know? Stuff gets released, and the other video becomes kind of a bit redundant as the new one comes out. I got, like, 40 comments <laughs> on this... Battle for Bikini Bottom Remaster old cancellation rumors. I changed the name to make it a bit clearer for people. And I also add out of date at the end. I got so many comments of people like, false lies. It's not true. It wasn't canceled. It's out now. This video didn't age well. I got so many of them. <laughs> and I was like, and my thoughts here, I think I commented on a lot of them. I was like, First of all, if they're saying, it's lies. I was like, did you watch the video? I spent the entire time talking about how the game most likely wasn't cancelled, which has now been proven. But I was like, don't jump to conclusions, people. It's it's probably not been cancelled. And then there's all these people just, who haven't even watched the video. just lies. <laughs> and everyone was like, well, this didn't age well. That's the joys of a news channel. Things don't age well. Um, but I'm going to keep doing it. So subscribe. <laughs> I would like to do one big thank you to the man himself, Fred5107. I meant to do this in the previous video and also in the video before that. Um, I honestly believe, without Fred5107, I do not believe this would have happened. I honestly, completely believe that. I think his influence with you know all these subscribers but just like all this, these uh, like the videos and like the kind of rallying of people and the amount of new stuff he did back um, before he's, I think he's taken the break. He's not doing it as much now. I'm not sure what's going on. I haven't kept up with all that, but I honestly believe none of this would happen. I don't think there would have been as much of a collective outcry to these companies if it wasn't for his constant, like send them emails, tweet at them, all this type of stuff. <laughs> I do not believe there have been any of that. So I want to say a massive thank you to Fred5107. I, I think he made this happen. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. I hope he comes back and makes a video talking about this uh, because I really believe this is something he built and is um, he kind of made and brought to, to all of us. And I wanted to say a big thank you to him and all the people who have also followed my channel but um, all the people of his community that have realistically made this happen. Like, it's all of us all coming together and sending all these emails and all these tweets and being very demanding. <laughs> <laughs>
And yeah, I, I'm not the biggest. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of Battlefield Bikini Bottom. I prefer the movie game. I prefer Creature from the Krusty Krab. I'm still super excited about this and the the precedent this sets and all the the future stuff we will hopefully get. So, yep, that's everything I wanted to talk about. All right. Bye bye. Mwah!